we look at uh, three measures of dispersion, the range, standard deviation, as well as the variance. Right? And uh, just a very quick recap, let's look at the range and some other uh, ways of measuring uh, dispersion. Uh, suppose we have this following times, like 15, uh, 23, 24, 24, 24, 25, 25, 25 again, and 26 and 98. And these are the times uh, in minutes taken by somebody uh, who comes from home to school. Right? And out of all these numbers, we already uh, know how to find the median. Uh, the median equals, uh, there are how many numbers? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 numbers, so the median is between the 5th and the 6th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So the median will be 24 plus 25 divided by 2, 24.5. Right? We know the median is this. And the range. The range will be the largest number, 98, minus the smallest number. And that gives... Uh, 83, right? I guess 83, uh, uh, 83 minutes. Uh, this uh, range doesn't quite make sense. Reason being, uh, the largest number is actually way above the median. Right? And there's a time taken that is very short, 15 minutes. Uh, the median makes sense because 24 and a half minutes is somewhat close to this numbers. They are all 20 something minutes. So a median of 24.5 is quite a sensible median, quite a good measure of uh, central tendency. Whereas the range doesn't. Uh, last week, uh, we have looked at, the, in the last session, we looked at the uh, standard deviation as a measure of dispersion. Uh, the standard deviation as a measure of dispersion, let's do a quick calculation what it is. Uh, we, we know the mean, right? The mean. The mean is the sum of all these numbers, 15 plus 23, and you keep adding until 98. Now uh, we divide by a total of 10 numbers. Uh, I've already pre-calculated this. Uh, this is 30.9. And we know that the standard deviation is calculated by taking each of these numbers subtracting the mean now we square it to remove the negative and you do the same for the rest of the numbers 23 minus 30.9 square it to remove negative until finally we have 98 minus 30.9 and we square this as well you take the average of all these 10 numbers and you square it so that uh, the final value I've pre-calculated is 22.6 minutes. Now, this way of measuring uh, dispersion doesn't quite make sense uh, for this situation. Now, you look at the general flow of the time from 23 to 26 minutes, with the exception of these two very large and very small number. Standard deviation, we know it's a measure of how far uh, the value is from the central measure, right, from the mean. It doesn't quite make sense. The, the central measure is 30, and the, this, the numbers are what, 22 minutes away from 30, so it comes up to about 50 over minutes. So this standard deviation is not very useful in a situation like this, when there are two values, one very small and one very large. Uh, we call these extreme values extreme values. This is also an extreme value. So although standard deviation uh, is one way of measuring dispersion, it is not very uh, useful in this case. So let's look at another way of uh, measuring dispersion right, by making use of this example. Um, it comes from the range. For the range, we take the largest minus the smaller. Now, what happens if we take the range of 
not all the numbers but a portion of the numbers. Okay, for instance, I can take uh, should I take maybe just the middle two number 25 minus 24. Say so let's take the range of this, but that is only uh, two out of ten numbers. Uh, maybe it's too few, so we should extend it. Uh, how much do I extend? Uh, a, a good sense is to extend to 50% of the numbers. 50% of the numbers. Uh, there are altogether 10 numbers here. So 50% of the numbers, that gives us 10 numbers. 10 numbers. Uh, how do we know which 10? We take, I believe we take 10 from the center, right? So from the center, if we have to count 10, uh, where would that be? Where would that be? Uh, if you cut it into half, you have five numbers here. Uh, five numbers here, right? Okay, let's let's look at the numbers again. Uh. 15, 23, 24, 24 three times. You have 25 three times. 26. center of these uh, numbers uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 so this is the exact center uh, if we want 50% what if we take this value and cut it into half again right? if you cut it into half it actually goes right through 24 you take this 5 number on the higher end and cut it into half again it goes right through this 25 uh, we know that exactly in the middle, it is between 24 and 25, so this is, uh, we already calculated earlier, 24.5, and we call this the median. Uh, if you cut it into half on the upper end, half on the lower end, uh, this is at your, actually at the upper one quarter position, and right? you cut it in this way, you have the first one quarter, the second one quarter, the third one quarter, and this is the fourth one quarter, right? So at the lower end of this quarter, this number, this 24, is the first one quarter, so we call this the lower quartile, right? Quartile, quartile comes from quarter. And the upper end, the upper end of the quarter, the fourth uh, quarter here, we will call this the upper quartile. And this number happens to be uh, 25. So you have 25 at the upper quartile and 24 at the lower quartile. Uh, if you take the difference between these two numbers, the upper quartile, difference we will subtract the lower quartile. That gives 25 minus 24, we get 1. Uh, this difference comes from the difference between the two quartiles, the upper and the lower. Uh, we, we shall call this the interquartile in, uh, range. Interquartile range. Uh, we, we know that the range comes from the big number minus a small number. But this time, instead of taking the entire range because of the extreme values here, we just take 50% of the numbers and take from the upper one quarter this number, subtract the number at the lower one quarter position. So you have actually 50%, approximately 50% of the numbers here. Right? Throw away the upper one quarter, throw away the lower one quarter, you are left with the middle half. Right? So we call this an inter quartile range. Uh, if you look at the interquartile range, one, it makes more sense in this case because the median being 24.5, how far are the numbers away from the median on both ends? It's roughly about half, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So this number one makes sense. Right? So it, it is a better measure of dispersion, how dispersed the times taken are compared to if you have to use standard deviation 
right? In this case, the dispersion is 22.6, which is not a true reflection because there are extreme values in this particular distribution. 